Nobody wakes up in the morning thinking, I'm going to go to Way and Eat today. Nobody knows. Nobody knows who it's going to be. Pediatric trauma call, 15 minutes. Code red, helipad response. You're having a heart attack. We want to be in and out of scan in the next 10 minutes. I can't feel any pulse. Reception, can I help you? Yeah, 24 hours, seven days a week. I love that question. What's your opening hours? St George's, London. One of the busiest and most advanced A&E departments in the world. Beautiful. It's as if we've done it before. We are there when awful things happen to pick up the pieces. We have a two-year-old who's kicked by the horse. We see the unpredictableness of what happens in life, and we're suddenly having to explain why it's gone wrong. I can't feel my left leg. You'll be OK. A place where life... Amy, Sophie! Don't be low. Too slow. <laughs> Love. Such a big boy. I'm so proud of you. And loss. I'm still here. Unfold every single day. So we don't shake hands at this hospital, we fist bump. Can I have a fist bump? <laughs> All the patients you're about to see were treated in just one 24-hour period. Hello, darling. You genuinely do see the best of people in this job. You'll see strangers rushing to the aid of someone they've never met. You just see things that make you realise just how important the people in your life are and the people around you are. Lord, give me strength to face another day. Did you have trouble, Ian, getting in? I, I always do, Julie. It's a nightmare. Also, did you take a photo of me earlier when I was asleep and I woke up to you taking the photo? Yeah. And I was like... You like this? <laughs> that is awful. I look like a turtle. A turtle? Have you seen that film Over the Hedge? Yeah, you look like that turtle, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Starting an eight-hour shift in recess today is Registrar Sophie. Just relax. Pop this arm down for me. Pop this arm down. Well done. There's definitely a sense of coming into work, and it's like, yep, yeah, here we go. Brilliant. And I think the stethoscope for me <laughs> is what makes me feel like, right, I'm ready for it. Let's go. And just around the other side. Well done. Working in A&E is very different. Boogie toes for me. Despite you being with the same people in the same place, every day is different. <laughs> and ultimately, that variety, that keeps the interest going. You're in the hospital, you're in St George's, OK. Can you open your eyes for me? The vast majority of people will maybe only go to a &E once in their lives. You might be able to kind of patch them up or sort out their pain. You're doing really well, I'm sorry. But you've got other people that are going in on a really regular basis. And you do think, oh, yeah, they're back. <laughs> Sharp scratch coming. I do try and find the personal connection. Get you a sandwich and a cup of tea with some sugar. Particularly with those that have chronic problems. We're going to need to keep an eye on you. We're going to need to check your blood sugars again. Because it helps you understand what they're going through. Oh, I'm coming back, don't worry. St George's a &E. medical trauma. OK, go ahead. Yeah. EJ. Thank you. Adult particle, 20 minutes. A 
39-year-old man is being rushed to St George's with an internal bleed from his femoral artery. He had a pop this morning and he's now got query arterial bleed internally. The main problem with internal arterial bleeds is that you just massively underestimate how much blood is being lost. Because it's internal and not external, you don't always know how much bleeding is occurring. Pressure's 130, pulse is 50. Worst case scenario, you can bleed out, lose your blood volume and potentially die. The man's wife has been informed and is on her way to the hospital. That morning, I went off to my Sunday morning yoga class and I was just about to have my me time for an hour and a half um, when the receptionist came in. She sort of tiptoed into the room and I just lay there thinking, please don't come to me. And she just head straight for me and I knew she was going to tell me that Stefan was on his way back into a &E. Stefan has a history of heart problems. Yesterday, he had an angiogram through his femoral artery that has now started to bleed. When his ambulance came in, it was on blue lights. They don't usually put lights on for Steph just to take him in, you know, for a normal episode. I didn't quite know what, what was going on and they rushed him straight into resus. Yeah, number three, please. Thank you. When someone comes in and they're bleeding from their femoral artery, you do need to act quickly. You need to stop that bleeding, otherwise the consequences could be very serious. OK, so this is the Just careful, take it nice and slow. All right. Doing a good job of putting pressure on it. Good. He um, had yesterday angiogram. He's got cardiomyopathy. Okay. Of which they put a clip in. Is that here? The toilet. Yeah. Yeah. Just heard a pop, and then it's really started to swell. Okay. He's still swelling now. He's got the pressure on it. My name is Sophie. I just need to examine you if that's okay. Is that the dressing from yesterday? Yeah, it's the dressing of the Fine. Yeah. Okay then. Um, yeah, keep holding it. You need to keep that pressure down really hard, OK? You can, you like. I've got to put the pressure on it. Ready? Over the course of the week, he had been already into um, A&E recess twice. Both tingling and um, pins and needles and problems with his heart beating abnormally. They decided to do an angiogram just to check that the heart passages were all clear. They then sent him home, which was quite a relief that everything was fine. We'll speak to cardiologist. That third time in A&E, you kind of run your nerves end. It's Sophie, one of the a &E registrars. I've got a gentleman who um, has got up to go to the toilet this morning, felt a pop, and now has a large swelling within the right groin um, that is getting bigger as time goes on. It happened about an hour ago, and he's basically had intermittent chest tightness. Doctors are concerned the drop in his blood pressure and sudden blood loss could be putting Stefan's heart under even more strain and have called a cardiology doctor. And how are you feeling? Feeling lightheaded? Anything like that? My leg's feeling a bit like the circulation's being cut to the leg. I remember just thinking, please, just let this be OK. There's cardiology on the way. It's been 15 minutes since 39-year-old Stefan arrived in A&E with internal bleeding from his femoral artery following complications after an angiogram. Hello. Let's have a look on the leg. Yeah, so no, I need to be told off to try one of the kind of drugs drops here. So, ready? There you go. 
Hi, my name is Oliver. I'm with the CC University. It is like flat concrete. Stefan's 44-year-old wife, Fiona, has arrived in A&E. Before she can see him, doctors must stem the bleeding and stabilize his condition. You all right there? Yeah. Let's relax. You're doing all right. Cool. I saw him for the first time walking into a bar in South Africa. Stefan was about 21 and I was about 26. We'd meet up at parties but we seldom arrived together at a party, so we'd kind of keep an eye out for each other the whole night in the hope that we'd bump into each other so we could have a chat or a dance. We always had a thing for each other. We just couldn't get our relationship together. Either it was going too fast for him or it was going too fast for me. We just weren't on the same page. Being all right? Mm. Do you want some pain relief? Morphine? It just became really difficult between us. So we cut all ties for three years, and then I dedicated myself to making a life without him and just try to move on. The problem was I thought about him all the time. If I saw something amazing, I think, oh, Stefan would really like that. At the end of the three years, I rang him up and asked him uh, if he'd mind getting together for a coffee. I said to my friends, if he pulls up the driveway and I take a look at him and get that feeling, that feeling that says, I, I just have to be with him, then that's it. And he pulled up the driveway, I took one look at him and I said, I have to be with this guy. He was always my one. I don't really know where the distinctive point was when I knew there was something seriously wrong with him. Right. How are you doing? Yeah. Give you a bit of morphine, all right? His heart condition was always a part of, of him, of who he is as a person. It did worry me because it's a sudden death syndrome. So the danger is that he dies. He saw a cardiologist and he basically said to Stefan, no exercise at all, nothing. It'll be really dangerous for you. I'm sure Stefan must have felt a little bit like a walking time bomb. Specialist doctors have fitted Stefan with a device to stop the inner bleeding, but need to carry out further tests on his heart. Emergency department, can I help? I'm a bit concerned about you. Why? In case you have to have a little operation. Look, I drank a lot of milk when I was a kid. The calcium in my bones made them strong. <laughs> Nine-year-old Max has come to A&E with his dad, Carl, after injuring his wrist. Max? Here we go. Hi, I'm Tom. Hello. Can you go? Hi. Thank you. So, Max, what have you been up to? Um, I was skateboarding and um, I fell off because my sister scooted past and um, I think I might have either sprained or fractured my wrist. Eventually, my sister helped me. Eventually. Is she not very helpful? No. Nope. How old's your sister? Six. You don't need help from a six-year-old. Bearing in mind, I couldn't get up for about ten seconds. OK. Yeah. Dangerous sport, isn't it, this skateboarding? Mm -hmm. OK, so let's have a look at this wrist. So I'm going to just press the bones. Not there. Ah, oh, that hurts. Yeah, that hurts as well. Wh which was worse, that one? Uh, yeah, that one. If I put a bit of pressure on... Ow, ow, that okay. hurts. 
Yeah, I might just have a word hurt. with one of my seniors just to see if we should um, x-ray or not, because we don't like to x-ray them necessarily. Yeah. But I'll pop back in a minute. Do you want any painkillers at the moment? Um, mainly... It go, um, it's kind of low pain at about three, and then it yeah. gets to high intervals, like six, seven, mm. tops eight. It just goes up, down, up, down, and since I'm really hungry... Yeah. Um, the intervals are coming more, um... More quickly, so um, it's hunger related, yeah. Okay, slightly. I'm not sure that's something the doctor can help with. <laughs> no. we'll, we'll sort that out separately. Yeah, I'll be in a minute. Or two. All right, thank you. I think the sausage roll can sort that out. <laughs> it might do the job, yeah. Oh, ow, 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 it's coming in my wrist again. You want an x ray? Mm, I can't do, yeah. Yeah. Well, don't make up the pain just to get an x-ray. No, really. Because it's, it's radioactivity, isn't it? That's why they say yeah. they don't want to do it unnecessarily. <laughs> but they may just prescribe a sausage roll. Forty-year-old Fernanda has come into A and E with abdominal pain. She's with her two-year-old twin boys and their dad, George. Senta aqui ao pé do mano para ver o Mickey Mouse. Oh, Kinan, se tu não vês com o mano, eu vou te tirar o telefone. Senta aí ao pé do mano. When I was a little girl, I was really naughty. I didn't listen, whatever my mom say. If your mom said, do one thing, you never want to do what she's saying, do you? Filho, não é assim. I know now I have kids. When I was a child, my plans was like, I'm going to be a police officer. I'm going to have my own house, my own car, have my own life. But Everything came different. Deixa o mano também ver. Chega lá para o mano ver. Assim vou tirar o telefone. When I was 15, I was so ill. My mom take me to the hospital in Portugal. And uh, when I get inside, they done what they had to do, and then they call my mom and they said, uh, everything's okay. You don't need to get worried. My mom said, what do you mean? She wasn't well. No, she's just pregnant. My mom nearly died. Take him out. Deixa o mano ver, Kinan. I have five babies. Brenda, she's 24. Clara, 22. Patrick, 20. And I have the twins, Kinan and Kaylin. And today I'm very happy. I'm very happy. Sorry. Fernanda? Oh. Yes. Hi, nice to meet you. My name is Liz Hardman. I'm one of the doctors. Just want to come in here. OK, have a seat. Thank you. You comfortable there? I have a lot of pain here. And uh, to be honest, my back is killing me too. Does it come in waves or is it just there? This, is it, does it, just it stays the there, but time? in the night... OK. ..is worse. It's worse at night. OK, all right. Do you get... Have you had any sickness or vomiting at all with the pain? I do. I do feel sick in about. OK. When was your last period? March. Do you use any contraception or anything? No. No, because um, I don't live with anyone, to be okay. honest. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to lie back and I'll just yeah, sure. look at you? I had a previous operation. Oh, back. Attempt. OK. Right. My hand's really cold. I'm sorry. OK. Let me know if I'm causing any pain, all right? Oh, yeah. No. Oh, oh. OK. Sorry. Good. Ooh, okay. yeah. Pain in the back? Yeah. Okay. It's like a, a needles. It's going to listen. Okay, I'm just going to sit you up. Has anyone given you any painkillers? Have you given you anything yet? No. Can I get you any, any painkillers now? Have you had anything at home? Oh, no, I didn't. Dr. Liz will carry out further tests on Fernanda to find out the cause of her abdominal pain.
How's that pain relief working out for you, Stefan? Going all right? Doctors have now stemmed the internal bleeding from Stefan's femoral artery, caused by complications from an angiogram the day before. His wife, Fiona, has been waiting in the relative's room. OK, I'm going to go get your missus. Hi, my name's Chris. I'm one of the staff nurses. I'm looking after Stefan. Come on in. Did it just swell up really big? Really want to just cry. There's not a day that goes by that he doesn't do something magical for me. If he makes my lunch, he'll put a little note in at the bottom of my sandwich. I've got a whole box of notes that I found in really random places and quite pleased I didn't choke on while I was eating. I'll come home from work of a hard day and if he gets home before me, there'll be candles and he'll have dinner on and he'll have laid a mat out on the floor to give me a back massage. He just treats me like a princess. I could not imagine my life without Stefan. I can't think how I would do it. I can't think how I would wake up every morning and not have him there. Doppler, yeah. Due to his existing heart problems, doctors are worried about Stephen's blood pressure. They're also concerned the arterial bleed has reduced the circulation in his leg. What you want to keep doing is checking the blood supply further down the legs. There are risks. If the foot isn't receiving enough blood, then potentially cells are going to start dying. I text Phil. I said that you need prayer in the service today. I need to pray for you. There's been a complication with your angina. So he said he'll do that. I thought get the whole congregation in on it. We both know that we took the responsibility of the heart condition together when we got married. The early years were really tough. But that's what you do when you're married. If I were to get suddenly sick, he would look after me. Yeah. I was brought up very much in um, a pastoral home. But I was a bit worried whether Stefan would want to come to church. And I said to him, please, will you come with me to church? There's a lovely little Baptist church just up the road. And his condition was, as long as I don't have to wear a suit going to church had a really big impact on our lives. And I think having a faith does give us a great sense of security for his life. Good. Still got pulses in your leg. That looks good. good. And this doesn't mean he's not going to die of a heart condition. We can't control that. I can't balance on skateboard. I used to skateboard all the time as a kid. I'm so hungry, though. I know. Hopefully it won't be long now. Nine-year-old Max has come to A&E with his dad, Carl, after falling off his skateboard and hurting his wrist. Doctors are studying the results of his X-ray. Come look at your X-ray. Yep. Um... 
Do I get a sausage roll as well? <laughs> I don't know about that. So here we go. That's your that's your hand. So show me where it hurt again. Put your hand up. Look. What was the other hand that hurt? Yeah, this one, sorry. So um, point to where it was hurting. Right there. So that's about here. Yeah. That's that bone's here. And uh, it looks absolutely fine. There's no break or anything at all. So um, I think we can safely say that it was a sprain. Yeah. If it swells up again, you can try a bit of ice and keep it moving. Mm -hmm. Does that all sound all right? Yeah. You happy? Yeah. You can go home and have your sausage roll. <laughs> <laughs> and I did that with the other hand, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and don't go, don't be too hard on that sister of yours. <laughs> yeah, good. Cheers. Bye. Well done. Thank you. All good. So it's a sprain, no fracture or anything. Just a sprain. To keep it moving, that's important. One of the important things, anyway. We're done. <sighs> Should we go and catch the bus? Mm -hmm. And then some food. Some food? Yeah. Forty-year-old Fernanda has come to A&E with abdominal pain. Doctors have taken blood and urine samples to find out the cause. Her two-year-old twin sons, Kaylin and Kanan, are waiting outside together with their dad, George. I'm just waiting for them to phone me back. But uh, my colleague will grab me if they're done. I'll just come put, put a drip in. How old are the twins? The two. Two, two and a half. They're going to be three next month. Oh, my month. goodness. Wow. George and I grew up together in Portugal. We used to go primarily together. And then when I came here, I stopped seeing him for 20 years. Oh, I hate this. No needles. I hate needles. There'd be something wrong with you if you liked them, I think. <laughs> All of a sudden, my sister saw Facebook and she called me, Nanda, Nanda, you don't know who I found in Facebook. A sharp scratch. Well done. Oh. It's done. It's finished. It's and finished. we started talking about the past, the present, the future, everything together. And the things, slowly, slowly, things happen. And uh, I got pregnant of twins. So you're telling me they're two, the twins are? Gosh, that sounds like a bit of a handful. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. I wanted for us to stay together and uh, have our family and uh, look after our babies together. But for the moment, it's not the way it goes. It's not relationship. Is more friendship. But who knows one day can be my husband. We never know. We never know. All right, so all the blood's back and I've tested your urine. OK, so there's no infection in the urine, which is good, but the pregnancy test is positive. I don't know. Is it... Did you think it might be this? No, no idea, okay. no idea. Has it come as a bit of a shock? Uh, um, a little bit. OK. Because of the pain, there could be an ectopic pregnancy. Have you ever heard of that before? No. OK, so it just, what an ectopic pregnancy is, is when the, the pregnancy just implants. So when, it, when, I mean, when I say implants, I mean when it sticks to the womb. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it sticks in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. And if that grows in the wrong place, it can cause pain, swelling, and sometimes it can be quite dangerous. OK. If it is an ectopic pregnancy, usually this pregnancy has to be terminated because it can't, it can't survive in that, in that place. OK, so okay. we just have to kind of take it one step at a time. Yeah. If you're feeling more unwell at all, let, let us know. We'll just, I'll just I will. to come and recheck your blood pressure. And OK, that kind of OK, like thank you. OK, <sighs> Len. Come. Hi. Huh? I put a little wish.
Yeah, hi, I'm Connie from St George's a &E. I have a sickle cell patient here. Emmanuel, he's a 19-year-old. He's got lower low back pain. 19-year-old Emmanuel Jr. suffers from sickle cell disease, a chronic condition that causes infection and severe pain. He's come to A&E with his dad, Emmanuel Sr., after suffering an acute attack at home. Oh. It's all right. His mum is away from home, but has been notified. In our department, we have uh, designated link nurses, and I take the link for sickle cell disease. <gasps> sickle cell disease is a blood disorder. The treatment is pain relief. The main thing is get on top of the pain as soon as possible. Which arm would you like top of it? Where's the pain? I'm never laid down for this. In your way? Lower back, right, left thigh. It has been proven the quicker you come in, the quicker you get over your crisis. You know what I mean? There's a few things that they could do in between. You know, it's ibuprofen or, yeah. Just, you know, as you get older, your body gets changes and so... But there are other tablets they can give you at home that they can... Yeah. When Emmanuel was younger, he didn't used to suffer from it. Before the age of eight, he was hardly ill. But after the age of eight, it was like a flood. The sickling is not anything that can be controlled. You can sleep at night, go to bed well, and wake up in the morning ill. The blood cells just sickles, and then it starts a whole extreme painful episode. And you don't know when it's going to end. Mm. OK. The only thing you can do is alleviate the pain. Cool. More often than not, Emmanuel does end up in hospital. The shortest Emmanuel stayed in the hospital, I would say, is probably five days. He normally stays for a while. I'm tired, yeah. Very tired. Specialist doctors will now assess the severity of Emmanuel's condition. It's been an hour since 39-year-old Stefan came in with an inner bleed from his femoral artery. Medical staff are waiting for test results to understand what caused the bleed and ensure his heart is stable. Hi, I'm Sophie, by the way. I'm one Hi. of the registrars. Hey, how are you doing? I think that looks better. I think when someone's going through any sort of major life event, but particularly an illness, having people around you is so, so important. Yeah, right, certainly looks you. a bit better. My mum was initially diagnosed with breast cancer 11 years ago. Up until that point, my parents had both been incredibly fit and well. So when that diagnosis came, it was a huge shock. It's a really difficult time. One of the hardest things to learn to deal with as a doctor is that you can't cure everything. All you can do is manage it as best you can. Whether you're a doctor or not, you still got to deal with all the emotional side of it. OK, Stefan, I think we're doing well. Good. Doing well. Uh, very shortly, we're going to be taking you up to one of the cardiology wards. Cool. OK, Belgrave. Were you on there before? Yeah, fair enough. I've got a... Bed 30 would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a private room. <laughs> get, get, it, get it free with every third, every third admission, you see? That's what it is. <laughs> When we first got married, Stefan got a really stressful job in sales. So, let's have a quick look, see what's going on. And his health just deteriorated at a really fast pace. 
I got a call one Friday afternoon from Stefan saying that he'd collapsed in Victoria Station on his way home and that he'd called the ambulance that I was to try and get there as quickly as I could. When I got there, he was slumped up against one of the big pillars, not looking very well. He was very grey, very clammy. I could see that it wasn't good. We went straight to the hospital. They just didn't really know what to do with him. And then uh, the cardiologist eventually decided to fit this ICD unit onto his heart. And so if the heart does suddenly stop, uh, the, you know, the sudden death syndrome were to happen. He has a little device, which is one of those, like the paddles, the clear shock paddles, but it's actually on his heart. cardiologist said to him, go and, and try things, go and live a little bit because you do have this backup. I mean, obviously, he, he didn't mean go wild. You got any pain at the moment, Stefan? No. It was a slow turning point. It took us a while for him to get to where he could actually come out for a run. It's surprising hearing some of the things that some of these patients are doing, not letting that condition limit what they can and can't do. A lot of them want to make the most of that time they've got because they don't know how long they've got. It's amazing what you can endure yeah. if you push yourself. Yeah. I guess if you're doing Ironmans, you'll... Ever since I've known him, it's been the Ironman. Have you done one before? No, it's just my first. He wants to do it for the endurance and the fitness of it, but I think he also wants to do it to achieve his dream. Hopefully this will just be a yeah, little bit of a bump in the yeah, road rather than, you know, end of anything. Yeah, yeah. I'll take you up to Belgrave now. And by current trend, I'll probably see you tomorrow. <laughs> Stefan is taken to a specialist cardiology ward where he'll be closely monitored in case his heart condition deteriorates. Nineteen year old Emmanuel Jr suffers from sickle cell disease, a chronic condition that can only be treated with pain relief. He's come to A&E with his dad, Emmanuel Senior, after suffering an acute attack at home. Hi, Emmanuel. Hi. Hi there. My name's Dr. Kay Hanyan. Are you dad? Yeah. yeah. You're well, well experienced with it. Yeah. Can you tell me a bit more what, where the pain is and what's been going on? Lower part of the legs. So it's mainly the legs. Yeah. Collarbone. Collarbone, lower back, yeah. thighs. Both sides? Uh, just the left thigh. Just the left thigh. And then... Um, can I have a quick look at you? Yeah. I never thought I'd have children with sickle cell. It never occurred to me. When their children, all three, it was Amalia, Edward and Emmanuel, when they will all three get ill, basically, and they'll be crying here and there and stuff like that. So one day they were quite sick. So take some nice big breaths in there. And I had to take two of them into hospital and then they did the test and they found out that they were all suffering from sickle cell. That's how we found out. I'm just gonna press from the top, just very gently. Tell me if it hurts, yeah? I got a phone call to say that, oh, they've had to rush my daughter into intensive care. Yeah? Stop. That's where the pain is, is yeah. it? OK. She had a sickling, and then it just turned overnight. Her liver, her heart, her lungs, they all collapsed. And it just went from bad to worse to death. She passed away. Yeah. 
Yeah, we miss her a lot. We, we really miss her a lot. She was a real lovely child. She was really lovely. Yeah. And um, roughly how often do you, does your sickle cell play up like this? Quite often, really. Yeah? Yeah. Were you in hospital before for it? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know, do you know when that was? I think it was March. March? Yeah, OK. We live with it day by day because every day is not the same. There are days where it's different and there are days where, you know, we have joy, mm. happiness, peace. Just once, once the morphine starts working, it will, uh, it will start getting more comfortable. We're very close. We enjoy each other's company. We love music and we love dancing. Emmanuel likes to make music, so he will make us listen to his music. And I get him involved in my baking, my cooking. We make it as normal as we can. But on good days, on really, really good days, we really splash out. <laughs> But I think the priority is to try and get this pain a bit under control, yeah? Yeah? All right, OK, see you later. Emmanuel will be kept in hospital until his pain is under control again. It's a sad disease. It's a life-limiting disease. And as you get older, the crisis get worse and more painful. Anyway, sorry, my name's Sophie. Any problems you have? I'm here to help you guys out. All right. All right. Thank you, Sophie. All they need is someone to know that they're there for them should they need it. Forty-year-old Fernanda came into A and E with abdominal pain. Tests reveal she's pregnant, but complications mean there's a risk she could lose the baby. When George came inside of the room, I said to him, look, if he's a baby, I just hope he's a healthy baby. Mm, nice. I don't want to think we have to take the baby out. He said, no, 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 we, no we're not going to think like that. I don't even want to think about that because it's painful. It's painful. I didn't notice it's your birthday today. Gosh, you don't want to be an A and E on your birthday. That's not really like much of a present, is it? <laughs> not at all. Is the pain better? Well, yes. OK, and any sickness at all? I can give you some medicine. Uh, I feel sickness before, but now I'm OK. OK, let's yeah. know if it gets any worse. OK. Right. Doctors will keep Fernanda in for observation and carry out further tests to find out whether or not she can have the baby. There are times when Emmanuel will think, why, you know, and then they'll remember their sister and hope that when we go in, we will come out. Every incident, every episode, every situation that I've gone through, end of the day, once you're better, you think about it in the past. It's kind of a kind of a blessing that I'm here at this point. I'm still alive, still kicking. I 
knew it was serious. I get very, very upset thinking about not having him in my life. Who knows when you're gonna go? When it's my time, it's gonna happen. I'd rather me doing something that I'm enjoying doing versus having sat on a sofa watching TV because I want to know that I've had a, a value-led life. I was worried and he was worried because we never know what is really wrong and what is really the problem. So the delivery, he held the baby, he was with a big smile in his face. In my country, eh, we normally say one child is nothing, two is too little, three is enough. <laughs> you see, I have the double. I have three, three, six, so that's enough. Hello, St. George's. <laughs> Eight minutes. With high speed motorcycle accidents, you're at risk of massive chest injuries. You can bleed into your lungs, uh, your lungs can collapse. Okay. Have a listen to your chest. <laughs> On the radio, it was saying about this horrific motorcycle accident that had happened. So I came home, and Mum's bike wasn't there. 